Well, this is John Black, Super Chemist. Part two. You know, he took all my... He stole just enough stuff to leave me with the same charges, whoever it was, right? So, I still have the gun charge, which at that time was my second gun charge, so it was a felony. <clears throat> I still got the... Uh, Of it, you know, intent to distribute, transporting, whatever, because it was one gram over an ounce. I still got all, you know, who does that? Who fucking steals all your shit and then doesn't let you go? You know what I mean? I could see that. I could see, you know, but whatever. Some people are cops, some of the biggest dicks on the planet. So... I need to know what's going on here, okay? Because the prelim, I think, is within usually 24 hours or three days or something like that. I think it's three days. <clears throat> now keep in mind, this isn't my first trip to the rodeo. I learned my lesson on the first trip. Uh, it was like 18, <clears throat> maybe 19, you know, I was young. <clears throat> and uh, I got arrested for two felonies. I did some federal stuff. <clears throat> Anyways, I got a, uh, you know, free attorney, and uh, he got me, he reduced one of the felonies down to a misdemeanor, so I only, instead of two felonies, I had a felony and a misdemeanor, and I did, I think, a year of uh, probation. So for a free attorney, that was great for the average person or whatever, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, the more older I got, the more I learned about the law. You know, and looking back at that, uh, you know, they had me in an orange jumpsuit, uh, in cuffs, in the office area. The witness, they walked right by me while I was sitting there in cuffs and in an orange jumpsuit. They walked them right past me to the area where there was a lineup, and they put me in the lineup. You know, looking back at it, obviously they they tainted that. That it doesn't matter what that guy says now. It doesn't matter if he picks me out, and you know, it doesn't matter because they tainted the uh, you know the lineup. They tainted it. Now he's got even in the back of his mind he's seen me, even though the front of his mind didn't really pick it up. The back of his mind did. Now he sees me in the lineup. Now he's like, oh, that, that guy looks familiar. I've never seen him before, so he must be the guilty guy that I want to pick out of the lineup. So that taints it. I could have gotten that thrown out <clears throat> if I would have, you know, not been young and dumb. <clears throat> so this time I know, you know, I've got to take control. Uh, I'm obviously going to get a free attorney. <clears throat> but the point is, is that the free attorney works for me. He does what I say. And if he doesn't do what I say, I fire him. That's the first thing I learned. If you don't like what your attorney does, fire him. So anyways, uh, yeah, I, and I've had attorneys where I've paid. I had this one attorney. I was like, well, I'm not paying you the rest of it until we get done with this trial, man. Because I was actually, this is the first time I ever paid anyone in my life. So I actually paid them, and uh, I was like, well, I can't get you the rest. We was already into the trial, you know what I mean? Once, you're, once you start a trial, that's it. You, if you have one hour into it, uh and to take my case, you can't turn me down now. It doesn't matter if I pay you or not. <laughs> You're stuck. You are forced by law to keep, you know, me as your whatever. And he wasn't doing what I told him, so I says, well, look. Or not, he was, uh, he was telling me that I, I can't represent you if you don't give me the rest of the money before the trial. Because I'm thinking, hey, if I go to jail, that means I don't have to pay you. <laughs> you might even forget it by the time I get out, you know. Uh and he's thinking that too he's thinking i'm not going to get paid so he, he did the bluff so i just told him hey well okay well i'll just go to the judge and tell him you know i need another attorney i can't pay you and you know we're going to have to have a continuance bam he changed he says no i'll be your attorney don't worry about it <laughs> but anyways uh yeah they don't want to be fired that looks bad a judge does not want to hear from a plaintiff that he wants to fire his attorney because his attorney is not listening. Because by law, your attorney has to listen to what you say and do what you say, even if it doesn't make sense, even if it's illogical, he has to do it. Uh, 
So I want to, I don't want to go into this prelim and have whoever stole my shit. Maybe I could, you know, I did look into the uh, officer that arrested me. He was a highway patrol guy or state police, whatever you call him in whatever state you're in. Uh, and he was a, had a military record. He was in the Marines. He was a straight arrow. Nobody said anything about him doing anything crooked. Um, you know, he was, I, I couldn't find anything about him that was, you know, he was a straight up guy. He was a dick, but he was a straight up guy. I thought there's no way that he could have done it. <laughs> but I didn't want to go into the prelim and lock anyone into any testimony that they could not back out of. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that was my main concern was, and when I got my attorney, that was the main thing that I told him. I says, if you start asking a bunch of questions, I'm going to jump up and I'm going to fire you right on the spot in front of the judge. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you to shut up. <clears throat> you do not, you know, you ask the very minimum questions that you can ask, if any at all. I, you know what I mean? Uh, because I need to find out what's happening. If I can find out who stole my stuff, I'm automatically guaranteed freedom. You know what I mean? Um, so my, I got to find something out before the prelim because I don't want to screw stuff up at the prelim. I need to know who stole my shit. So first thing I start telling is everybody in my block. I'm like, oh, these motherfuckers just ripped me the fuck off, man. They just stole half my shit. I had. They stole three ounces of cocaine and a gun off me. And what's funny is I had a little bag. I did have a little bag of weed, like a eighth or a quarter or something. And they didn't. Even, you know, whoever stole my shit couldn't even have stole that. They left all that there just to make sure I still got the same charges. So everyone is obviously telling me, you know, shut the fuck up, man. You're lucky. You're, you're lucky you, you got less fuck. I ain't lucky, motherfucker. I got the same goddamn charges, you fucking morons. That ain't fucking luck. So I started asking around. I'm asking both, all blocks, everybody, what's going on? I mean, I'm not asking what's going on. I'm asking who's crooked. What's Who's the crooked cops in, the, in this place? You know what I mean? And the sheriff who, you know, most little city jails are... Um, in the same place as the police department's offices and that. You know, you share the same area, like, so they can watch you. <laughs> and uh, the sheriff was apparently, this was like, uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, the Dukes of Hazard back in the day, but this was like Boss Hog type territory. You know, everyone was crooked, man. The sheriff was stealing all the food, and I, this was so long ago, I can't remember what all was happening, but there was like, Everyone was stealing everything. You know, if it wasn't nailed down or they was whatever, if they can do a crooked deal or anything, these police would be the crookedest motherfuckers. But mainly I was hearing about the uh, sheriff. It wasn't really about his force or the people under him. It was really the sheriff that was crooked as hell. But most likely they all were, and I just didn't, couldn't, didn't hear about it. So now I know it's the sheriff. You know, this... Uh, Highway Patrol brought me in. Sheriff took all my shit, and now he thinks that he's it's a joke or whatever. So when the people, you know, the jailer comes by, which is usually the police, I, I think at that time it was the police that jailed the jail. And they come by every, like, you know, 20 minutes or something, 15, 20 minutes just to walk through. And uh, every time I seen them, you know, and it'd take them a minute to walk through, you know, I'd be there the whole time. I'd jump up on the bars like a monkey, you know, my feet up there and my hands, and I'd be holding on to the bars. He's walking by. Oh, somebody stole my shit, man. Somebody stole my shit. And you know what? Somebody's going to get in trouble. Somebody's going to get, and I'd say, man, somebody's going to get in trouble, in trouble. And I'd follow him down, and I'd be the most retarded, as, you know, I'd <laughs> just try to be the. Just to try to be funny as fuck, because I, I get hilarious when I'm in, when I'm locked up, you know what I mean? Because I know there's nothing, you know, you're either going to cry or you're going to, you know, laugh things off. So each time the guard comes by, which is, say, you know, one of the police officers, 
you know, they got 20 feet of cell, you know, they're small blocks, you know what I mean, cell blocks. So there's only about 20 feet, 25 feet for them to walk from one area to the next, you know, in mice, where the bars are, where I can talk to them. But I'm climbing on the bars like a monkey, I'm, you know, not just singing to them and chanting and, you know, I'm climbing up on the bars up to the ceiling like a monkey doing this, you know, I'm doing, I'm climbing on it, turning myself upside down, I'm following them down on the thing, you know. <laughs> the reason why I'm trying to be so comical or, you know what I mean, so crazy is two reasons. One, it's it's funny as heck. <laughs> and you have nothing to do, especially in these little, I usually always get stuck in a little tiny, tiny, tiny dink town. This town had like 3,000, uh, 4,000 people or something, you know what I mean. Put it this way, when I was getting ready to leave, I'm telling them, you know, uh, I'm going to get a, a I'll get a cab to get out of here, you know what I mean? Everyone started laughing at me, like, you know what I mean? Because they didn't have any cabs or whatever. So, I'm like, well, because they're like, how are you going to get to the, to the how are you going to get out of here if you get out? If you, if you, they, you know, no one believes me, but they're like, how are you going to get out if you did? You can't, you're going to have to walk. And, uh. I said, well, if they got cabs, I'll get, I'll get a bus, man. And they all started laughing again, man. Like, <laughs> what town doesn't have a bus? How do you not have a bus? But anyways, uh, you know, everything I'm mentioning, they're like, man, we don't have none of that. <laughs> I says, well, I'll walk, man. I don't get, if I get out of here, I'll walk. <sighs> so anyways, uh, you know, I, I think I know who it is, you know what I mean? And so, each time that card comes, because the reason why I'm being so comical is because I want the word to be spread on what I'm saying. I want everyone to hear it. And if I just say it as I walk by, they're just going to ignore me. But if I act like a monkey and turn myself upside down while I'm midair on these bars and follow them down the whole time while I'm in the bars and jump off and do a little jig and dance and you know what I mean while I'm singing to them you're gonna get in trouble you're gonna get in trouble you know cause you you know you stole my shit someone's getting in trouble someone's getting in trouble you're gonna remember that and you're gonna tell people because it's so crazy that you know what I mean? You have to tell. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> Especially when you're in a business like in the police where you're just sitting around doing nothing. You know what I mean? You're going to have to talk about stuff. You know what I mean? And, it, and that's the greatest thing in the world to talk about. Some nut job doing all that crap. You know what I mean? Saying, thinking, you know, he got in because you know they're laughing about it too. He got caught with fucking an ounce of coke and a gun and a little bit of weed. He thinks he's going to fucking get off scot free. What an idiot. <laughs> you know, so they got to spread the word right and uh so you know what happens they stop my mail they stop my phone calls they stop my eventually they stop my attorney from actually coming in and talking to me and uh it still didn't stop me from jumping up onto the bars you know each thing they took off of me I just say, I'm going to go to, then my chant would just change from each thing that they would do, my chant would change. Now, you know, you take my mail, you take my phone and, you know, attorney or whatever, you know, now my chant is, I'm going to prison, yeah, yeah, yeah. But once I get there, guess what? I'm, you're not going to be able to stop me from having mail and having phone calls and I'm turning up, I'm calling up internal affairs or whatever you call it in the state and I'm going to knock ins off and we're all going to be in jail together. I don't mind. Do you? Do you mind? Because I don't mind. I'd do lifetime as long as you're sitting there next to me, buddy. So this went on for about a week where I'm chanting, you know, after they took away my rights to have any contact with anybody. Uh, you know, I guess they thought that they would scare me and then I'd be like, oh, I'll shut up. No, I'm not going to shut. That's going to make me fucking scream even louder, motherfucker. You just made me scream louder. Now keep in mind, this is the worst state possible to get caught in. They're very hard on drugs, especially cocaine. Uh, for my thing, my plea at right now is set at 40 years. Now keep in mind, 40 years you get parole in 13 years in this state lifetime you get uh, paroled in 15 so I'm basically 40 years is life you know what I mean so this goes on for a week don't miss part three and always remember science is great